Uh, okay, sure. Uh, okay, so uh, welcome everyone again. Um, and uh, it's really, really uh, inspiring to see people are still here. <laughs> We're not losing many people. <laughs> it's good. Um, so I think like uh, last uh, week, uh, we've been go through the like many slides. This is the next one. Uh, which is ha which happens to be generative AI. Um, so this is actually the end of the first part, but um, um, this actually reminds me like I should finish I should have finished it last time, but I didn't. So this actually reminds me one thing that I was when I was in DeepMind, um, like um, we've been always playing a game uh, called uh, Hearth Hearthstone. Anyone play this game? Hearthstone. <laughs> so basically, like uh, it's kind of a game that everyone in the team loves to play. It's kind of a card game, and like in every turn, you play some cards and like fight with your op opponent. Uh, we we were once discussing like we should be writing an AI to like AlphaGo AI to <laughs> to play that game, um, and uh, like always we have something there. So like uh, just like. Probably someone is like playing the game, and I'm just standing there watching him play. And uh, when there's no hope, we, we always say, "Okay, this is the end." <laughs> we say, "This is the end." So in the end of the day, um, like when I leave the internship at DeepMind and go back to the university, um, like they give me this like a card. So basically, like in, in this one card, everyone will be writing something there, like you know, "Good luck," uh, say like "I'll see you again," some, something like that. <laughs> um, and uh, one of this like friends uh, playing this game with me, he was he writes this. He writes, "This is the end on the card." And I was like, "Mommy," and my advisor at that time, he, he still worked. He he worked uh, there in uh, Demai as well, and he saw that that line there. He, and he writes, and he writes just below that line. It's like, "This is not the end. This is just the beginning." Because <laughs> like later, I come back um, like after the internship and go back to Demai. On uh, that time, so uh, I think this treats as a very good uh, last slides. Um, this is probably the end for the uh, previous generation of LP, but this is probably just the beginning of uh, what we are doing at the moment. Uh, so, um, like originally, like people are focusing on like BERT kind of uh, architectures where we think BERT is like so good at the language understanding because it's kind of a bi-directional model and it's like encode every information, every bit of the information there. Um, but later after that, people realize, okay, sure, we can use these models to do generation. Um, generation is something like people at that time really hates about, I'll tell you why. Because um, it is really, really difficult to evaluate. So how can you say, you know, a model like generation, if it's like open, open ended generation task, how, how people say it's good or not, right? So for example, translation, you only get got one in, uh, reference there. For example, summarization, you got only got one inference there and like blue scores and like uh, those kind of scores. <laughs> It's purely based on the string-based matching system there, so it's really hard to like you know understand what is a good what is a good like response. For example, if you are doing a dialogue system, then you know you are, you ask the question is like um, say what do you have as a breakfast, and the reference answer may be saying like I had the uh, egg and uh, uh, noodles something like that, but you know. If you answer something like, I didn't have breakfast today, it's totally okay, it's totally correct, but it's like so different from your reference. So simply like for these answers, we don't know how to, we don't know actually how to tell about if it's good or not, right? So for this open generation questions. So this is actually similar to the case where like, uh, if people have been like much older, <laughs> like the same as my age, it's like when, when we're doing unsupervised learning, um, uh, for example, clustering at the very beginning, like people think this is also kind of a yield-defined problem, just because you can't really like evaluate those results properly. Um, uh, so, so, so like a lot of people like they don't want to work on this um, 
work on this stuff. So that's that's the reason um, um, like people are like much more um, towards like the natural language understanding task um, that time. There's also like um, some thoughts there where like people think uh, BERT is better at uh, understanding and like GPT is better at generation. These, these kind of intuitions today you you may you may seem it's not not true anymore because like <laughs> there's no such thing bird anymore. But like, GPT has been still used like um, uh, for for many different tasks. So um, that time, what people do? Okay, so uh, GPT two when it comes out, uh, Google people, um, a lot of Google people, I should say, a lot of Google people doesn't quite seem to like it because it's just a you know left to right language model. What's, what's good about it? We, we have known this for ages, I would say. Um, from bigram model to trigram model to like, you know, all these models, it's, it's always left to right language model. It has been there for 30 years. In fact, <laughs> in fact, uh, one of my colleagues who is submitting a paper uh, during that time uh, to a very famous LP conference that time, and like the paper got really good reviews, um, but like the AC jumps out and saying he thinks that language model isn't a real problem to study because it doesn't lead to any downstream, real downstream applications. So that's the, that's the thing, like, you know, that a lot of like people um, towards like uh, generation language model uh, at that time. So it's actually very simple. When we have the transformer, uh, what we can do here is we'll just do a causal masking like we did today uh, for the generation where like during training, uh, you don't have attentions uh, for the future tokens because if you see them, the model doesn't learn anything. It's just learn to copy uh, future things where like in the decoding time, uh, you simply don't have them. Uh, so you have to learn uh, from the past. So this is like the uh, trans to use transformer uh, as a decoder. And uh, uh, in GPT-2, uh, people like argue the uh, uh, one of the uh, very intriguing uh, 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 property of GPT-2 is actually it can do uh, this kind of um, um, uh, 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 few shot learning. It's not much about zero shot learning that time. Um, I tell you why later. Um, but, but like about the few shots learning, where like uh, I can put a set of like X and Ys into the model. So um, the example, and it's like, so a movie review and it's like positive, negative, another movie review, positive, negative, all these things. Um, and then uh, after that, the model will learn to um, like generate what's the correct answer. So that's an amazing ability that uh, um, the OpenAI team was uh, arguing uh, at that time. It's not much about zero shot learning, it's because people feel it's unbelievable at that time. So you train a large language model, and the way you want it to be uh, doing the task of summarization uh, is just to put a token TLDR there, <laughs> and then it will generate the summarization for you. This is actually in the GPT-2 paper, if you see that. So people feel that that's super like unbelievable because like you never like fine-tuned uh, on this kind of task. The, the, the model somehow um, has to understand some of the instructions uh, at that time. Uh, so it's crazy. And because like the performance isn't that great, so people, like a lot of people are still skeptical about what's happening there. But we all know like you know, zero shot has been the same uh, today. And uh, this in context learning, um, its importance seems to be downweighted um, um, at least, you know, regarding that time. So large language models, um, uh, I, I had a, a, a workshop uh, uh, recently um, for like, people say we shouldn't call it large language models because um, at uh, uh, this time, at more time, it's already large enough. Um, uh, uh, we should call it GLM, which is like giant language models. So um, past th this few years from the year like uh, 2013, whereas I I'm still doing uh, my PhD, uh, we have this word to vect stuff, we have this glove stuff uh, from Stanford. Um, and uh, uh, then when we moving uh, forward, we have seen um, uh, models like girls um, quite large in terms of its parameter size, in terms of, of its uh, training corpus, like the training tokens uh, 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 used to be uh, for BERT, we have 13 gigabytes. 
which is basically uh, the books corpus plus some Wikipedia at that time, uh, which we treated as like the high quality text today. And uh, uh, goes for like 570 gigabytes. That, that this 500 is like um, the data was extracted from a much larger uh, corpus of like terabytes tokens um, uh, 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 and getting this training uh, corpus there. So if you compare the size of a GPT-3 uh, with the size of GPT-2, uh, it's like giant uh, dinosaur uh, versus a human being. So um, recently I've been thinking about one, one question um, is that um, if, you, if you see the parameter size or the computational growth um, over the, 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 the very important milestone um, 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 machine learning models, actually Ling sent me this graph um, there, um, then you can see this exponential growth quite clearly, even before the year of 2018. Um, like when you see AlphaGo, then, 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 then the major machine learning systems, the exponential growth of the computation actually is there from 1950s to today. It's always like exponential growth. It's just more exponential um, recently, um, uh, given that we have the deep learning uh, stuff comes in. Um, so if you are here, imagine that if you are in the year of 2018 and you see that exponential growing curve, what you will do, what, what, what will you think? What will you think? So after five years, what's the model size will be? Making no doubts, I think it's quite easy to predict that if we're standing at this point, uh, it's like Ilya is standing at this point, and he says that the exponential uh, trend will continue, will still continue today. So um, we are now in a different situation. Um, like nowadays, we think that um, like there's uh, rumors about uh, Lama will be re releasing this 400 billion <laughs> um, parameter model next month. Um, will this trend continue? So I don't know. Like after five years, what's the size of our model at that time? Is it like we have been reaching the selling point or will it be still like exponentially growing? I don't know. But like at this moment, the scale up trendy, uh, the trend of scale, scaling up things still goes on. Mm. So if I have to take a bet here, um, this is always like when I when I talk to my students, I will say uh, they, they'll ask me like, uh, uh, do you like A or do you like B? I will just say A has something good, B has something good, and if you have to ask me to give an answer, I will say A, something like that. <laughs> so um, I I think this trend will still. Um, continues. I still think like you know there will be more ways of like growing the model exponentially in the next uh, five to ten years, uh, and I think this is what people are doing at the moment. Uh, some people may wonder like um, you know we we will have this data hunger problem, where we have finished all the we have consumed basically all the text data on the web, whatever like on the web. Uh, OpenAI will take it to train their model. Um, <laughs> So, um, but we don't have that many, when we're talking about the scaling law, they say that we don't have that many data to train the model. Um, but like recently, uh, there has been views of um, um, uh, like we can create more synthetic data um, to help to train the model. So this could be um, something continue. So if you have to, like if you, if you ask me like to, to bet, I'll probably bet the trend will still go on. Um, yeah, this has like profound implication of what kind of um, hardware uh, we would like to build. There. Okay, so I think this is the uh, the end of the first part, and uh, the second part we'll be talking about you know what we are, uh, where we are going. So um, where we are going, I think uh, one of the very important stuffs that we've been discussing uh, recently. Uh, this is mainly uh, uh, about like the, to harness the difficulty of uh, ultra long uh, sequences. Uh, as we all know, uh, like uh, transformer are building uh, upon this attention mechanism, um, where like uh, in each time step, um, we'll be looking at all the previous history 
um, um, and we'll, 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 we'll having compute this attention and we'll decide which token to look at and then pull this token out and help it to make the prediction for the next one. So this is actually a very general flexible um, setting of the neural network architecture. Where like if we have a sentence here, um, then every token is inter interna internally uh, con connected. So the language, so the transformer model, it can um, it can like compute um, every single interaction between different tokens in that way. So in the end of the day, it's a it gives us the computational complexity of like uh, uh, n square, where n is like the length of the sentence. So um, this is very good. Uh, this is probably the key to the success of uh, transformer models, just because it does not assume any like inductive bias, any structural bias in your sequence. Whatever you have your sequence, there will be like relationships between different tokens. So I consider every single different tokens. I consider every possible interactions there, and it will be like very uh, very expressive, very flexible, um, seeing that. Uh, to help us to model things. And it captures the long range dependencies and pr produce globally uh, contextualized representation. But the problem um, for that is running with quadratic complexity. Um, so it's forbidden to process long sequences. So um, after uh, the first version of like ChatGPT comes out, um, people has been thinking about, actually not even after, maybe before, like people have been thinking about this, this will be a problem. Uh, I heard a joke about that. It's like uh, some, some old lady, lady from uh, England and she's like trying to use uh, ChatGPT, and he she starts to like uh, uh, develop some kind of a maybe romance relationship with the ChatGPT. And uh, one thing he, she feels like super frustrating is that um, uh, her partner uh, just cannot remember uh, things they've been discussing about before 4,000 words, something like that. So, um, so she has to be like really carefully like managing to um, talking about things within this uh, sequence lens. It's just don't have this state for what we call state for today, uh, the state for memory for things. It that doesn't like support uh, a quite long sequence uh, understanding uh, and generation tasks. So it's, it's, it's just a diff difficult thing to do um, fundamentally because um, the uh, attention architecture uh, that we consider the, in the transformer. So a lot of work has been done in this space. Uh, one of the things uh, uh, done in uh, our group uh, is uh, called IRFA, uh, which is quite early. This is by uh, Peng Hao. Peng Hao is now an assistant professor at UIUC. Uh, so, um, so this work is actually quite, quite um, inspiring. So um, like you're looking at this uh, attention um, uh, function here, uh, where basically uh, this is like the 2K uh, stuff that you are trying to looking at. And this is like the normalization. So normalize over all these tokens inside the sequence to getting the weights in the end and then uh, getting these weights to combine with the value stuff. That's what you, what, that's what you do. Um, so that's why like, you know, it costs you um, um, uh, n square uh, 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 complexity during, during decoding it has to be uh, recompute every single time because once you're adding something there, the denominator is not the same anymore. So you have to do that. And uh, um, one thing to handle this is actually using this. This is called the random uh, feature function. So we're like exponential of Q and K equals to the kernel version of uh, phi Q and phi K. So why is this good? It's because when you put this, into this attention, you immediately get this. And this implies that you can put this Q by Q out from this denominator so that um, it's only a term that you can accumulate over K. So um, putting it into this way, it's like it's quite an open like uh, structure. So this is why like when I first come to uh, Samba Nova, I feel like so super excited about this thing. <laughs> it's like this is basically an RN. Where like in each time step, you're trying to accumulate um, the blue part here, and you don't need to recompute the whole um, stuff. So this makes the complexity um, from um, quadratic to um, linear. 
And if you're familiar with, um, you know, today's architecture like Mumba, um, it's um, roughly similar things, but you probably will be having some of the weights uh, when you're doing this accumulation in this, um, in this space. So um, this actually gives you a really nice way so that uh, if you train uh, uh, architecture like that, um, then automatically uh, you're getting like O uh, to the N um, uh, complexity. It's like a linear complexity. So that's why we call it linear transformer sometimes. Uh, and you don't need to, you know, having this uh, quadratic term anymore. Yes. The file here is a random feature function. So basically, you first map this uh, original Q and K into a feature space before you apply it. Yes. Uh, it, it can have many different forms. Yes. I think Gaussian is one of them. Yeah. It's a Fourier transformation. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, thanks for the explanation. <laughs> yeah. OK. So looking forward. Um, the performance of this, I want people to be looking at this first. Uh, I'll first say bad things. Like I think it's a Chinese culture to first say bad things. Uh, <laughs> okay, so when we're looking at these models here, this is the complexity, uh, so, sorry, complexity of different models. Uh, when you see it, this is the original transformer. Uh, this is some, um, what else? I don't know, performer. Performer is basically the same as RFA, the same thing uh, we were talking about. So perplexity here, is uh, everybody knows that this is like four, but like in training on the same data, uh, it gets you 10. So it's unacceptable. Four versus 10 is unacceptable. I always making this uh, intu intuitive thing. This is like uh, four means um, uh, if you want the model to predict the next word, uh, the model like probably will getting it uh, 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 right. Uh, 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 like uh, uh, in four tokens. So effectively guessing from a vocabulary size of four. But this is like uh, uh, effectively guessing from a vocabulary size of 10. So it's like much less uh, certain about what the next word um, is. So um, we actually uh, tried to apply this uh, structure and saying that, you know, why we not using this RFA stuff just for pre-training. And, and um, not only us, like a lot of people uh, does this, the problem is obvious. Because uh, if you want to push this kind of a uh, perplexity into pre-training, it will be disastrous. You just cannot use it um, the same. The problem of that is, um, uh, I think, you know, from the Mumba view, it's probably less obvious to see that. But from the RFA view, it's um, quite, quite, um, you know, clear what, what the problem is here. This is discovered by uh, Ling, uh, who is there. It, it's actually quite nervous to talk about something where like your audience knows better than you. Yeah. Um, so you find that uh, the exponential of P, uh, uh, gx under px, it doesn't equal to this term, which is basically saying, when we replace this term of exp, qk here, into a kernel version, it's not accurate. So you can have a lot of examples for these things and the uh, this actually caused a lot of like the problems in terms of the final perplexity there. So um, I think like before we can have such um, architecture into the pre-training, um, we still need to solve a lot of things before we can actually apply them in the pre-training stage. So um, this is um, uh, uh, what we uh, did for uh, in, in the response to um, do that. Uh, this is a paper by Ling. Uh, on like uh, 2023, um, uh, which is like the, uh, the, the, the architecture that uh, uh, he's trying to implement here as well. Um, this is called uh, EVA, uh, where like uh, we're getting um, the just reorganized and uh, see it in principle ways where like the local connection, uh, corrections are. And like we have also like the local linear attention approximation in these two parts. Uh, in the end of the day, we can get much more, uh, and in theory, I think this should be unbiased estimation of the uh, final attention function. So this comes to uh, a philosophical question is that if, if transformer, um, this, uh, this attention mechanism, this softmax function is the optimal architecture. If attention, if softmax is the 
optimal architecture. It's like the beta of like how, how long transformer will be having there. Then we are approximating the optimal stuff. So this, you're getting a guarantee um, that when you do this, um, you fell into a group of people who really believe in uh, transformer uh, is the final solution that we've been having. Uh, we, we can approximate other things. It's probably been better, but I think all this uh, logic that we have been for now is building up on it. So it still enjoys linear um, complexity, um, but because it has a much better um, uh, estimation there, the performance um, implication is huge. Um, so uh, this is like the, the, the figure that I... I, I this paper. Uh, okay, let's see this slide first. So the, trans, uh, the softmax one is 3.74. This is like the language model perplexity uh, task. And we see the original transformer, original, sorry, or, original RF here, RFA here, the performer, uh, which is like eight something. The softmax is three something. So it's really a huge gap there. But if you see like we're using uh, EVA thing, like uh, training on the same length sequence, uh, we can get it into very close to the softmax. If we um, double the size of um, the um, uh, uh, training um, um, sequence, then because like the longer information you have, the lower perplexity you should be having, right? So uh, we can reach like even lower um, perplexity in, 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 in terms of softmax. So this uh, table here actually tells you uh, the performance is the same as uh, softmax. So that's why I'm like, super feel comfortable and confident uh, to apply it in the pre-training stage. Um, and on this um, left-hand side, this is much, matter, much more interesting here, is that we have a green curve at the soft mass. So if you see that running time, here you can see like, our, uh, uh, the, the EVA architecture here, it consumes data much faster when the softmax hasn't been, um, EVA has been So it's, it's, a, it's a very like data efficiency, a data efficient way to do the pre-training as well. So this um, actually, um, I think um, this is like why, why, why I'm super, super confident about uh, using this architecture for pre-training. Okay, yes. So, okay, so I think like we probably can give this intuition here. Um, if you are running original RFA uh, or Momba or, or, or Hyena, Hyena also belongs to this family, I don't know, actually. Um, okay, so if you run things like that, then it's like the sequence of information previously has been accumulated in this, in this thing. So it's a hidden state that comes with um, play in each time step. So it's like RNN. So it's being stored in this, let's just call it a hidden state, this RNN. And going forward, going forward, we're like you always store everything in this one thing. So this is annoying because for some of the tasks, for example, bioinformatics class, uh, it probably really matters, like in this long sequence, only like two points. If this has been appeared and this has been appeared, then this sequence is toxic some way. I don't know. Um, this is okay because you probably don't need to remember like a rich level of interactions between the tokens. But the problem of that is that if you've been treating with something like language, so it may be like the, the interaction between those and tokens can be far more complicated. So like when you go through the left-hand side to the right-hand side, the hidden state there might not be having the ability, the capacity to remember, to accurately modeling those, those interactions anymore. So where like in this thing, you have like those localized version of, of RFA where like uh, we, we're trying to you know, model these things uh, uh, locally and having multiple copies of them um, before we try to reach the global thing. So you have like a larger space of, um, um, of like uh, modeling the complexity interactions between those tokens inside that.
Not really. It's the same thing. Yeah, I think for more details, probably you can check the paper for that. Um, but like, um, um, I think like we've been giving a fine, like high level uh, thing. There has been like, uh, there, there is actually the proofs inside the paper. You can check that out. It's a theoretically guaranteed uh, 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 unbiased estimation for the transform. Uh, for the softmax. Okay, so um, if you don't want to be that, <laughs> if you don't want to change the architecture, um, we we also have other ways of like uh, 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 solving the stuff. Uh, this is by uh, one of my other uh, students. Uh, this is a training free uh, solution where like you can um, extend your, it, 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 I think people call it uh, extrapolation. Uh, you can extrapolate your original transformer, which has been trained on, like, say, the size of 100 to the size of, like, 10,000, something like that. So uh, the trick there, uh, actually, people <laughs> trying to, actually, what, 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 what uh, Chen Xing trying to do there uh, is that uh, it's a trick on the positional uh, embedding. It's a trick on the position, uh, relative position. So in terms of the relative position, uh, where, like, the problem of, like, you can't extrapolate uh, is that you've never been trained on m minus n, where like m minus n greater than 1,000, for example. Never know that. You never know what the representation should be that length. So uh, what he's trying to do is he's saying, OK, uh, so uh, let's forget about it. Uh, let's uh, say that we are training on the sequence length of 1,000. And what we do is we will just use 900 of them. And probably we have another 100 like embeddings there. And uh, for like m minus n is greater than 1,000, we just like, you know, say 99 as, the, as that length. And uh, for the internal safety model, it more correctly, for the things uh, that's far away from you, uh, you just don't care that much because, well, it's, it's not that, you know, well-trained uh, either. So it's a very, very critical um, solution to the thing that, works surprisingly good. Um, so now uh, this trunk lemma is inside uh, Qianwen, which is like a, a, a very uh, large model built by Alibaba. Uh, so uh, we have also like a demo, uh, like if you check the website, uh, there's a demo for running uh, this trunk lemma on uh, like long, long PDF understanding um, tasks, where like you originally having say a model that tokens, and what you do is you will just extend on uh, this thing to like three thirty k lens and still running that, and it actually got a really good performance um, there. So I didn't notice this demo um, until I checked the website. <laughs> so I think uh, it's quite a surprise to me as well. Like they have this uh, quite nice nice demo um, there. Okay, cool. So speaking of that, uh, we have to come to the evaluation of these long sequences as well. Um, so what we've been thinking in our group um, is that um, so for uh, I think people play around with like this uh, uh, long arena, long long sequence arena. L is that long sequence arena? LSA, long 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 something arena. <laughs> it's by Yipai. Um, so um, that benchmark. Um, so it's it, the the problem with that is like many different architectures just uh, just uh, just uh, um, just performing kind of the same. It doesn't really matter if you have a good architecture there or not. Um, so our solution is like we will be building like uh, uh, different tasks uh, for evaluating this uh, architectures. This is on the top part. Uh, where like we choose uh, real real like long sequence tasks, and then we can test you on uh, not only on the uh, encoder level long sequence attention, which uh, is like evaluated by the long sequence arena, um, 
And uh, we also like can test it uh, on this like causal attention, long sequence causal attention, where like you can um, uh, just the transformer uh, decoder causal attention. It's 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 a different uh, um, uh, uh, implementation there. So uh, some of the architectures are not easy uh, to do on this causal level attention while it's like performing well at the encoding level. Uh, 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 long sequence attention. So you have to like evaluating this uh, uh, differently on that. It's a lot of so on the uh, long side part uh, is another work by uh, Chen Xing, uh, who is like uh, checking that uh, we should be uh, running this uh, long sequence uh, 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 level understanding task on a real application. Uh, I think uh, the, the way they do that is they, they actually uh, read this very long book and then starting to write questions on their own. Uh, so if, uh, only if you know the whole context of this book, you can answer these questions. Uh, and he, they, they have been coming out with a lot of like um, uh, tasks like that. Also, uh, it has like uh, this lens instructions. So originally when we evaluated those models in terms of generation, uh, low sequences, if you don't give it a, 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 a like lens uh, reference there, the model actually varies a lot. So this is the this is the graph. But if you give them the lens instruction, for example, you you, you have to generate a, a, a thing for like a lens of two thousand something like that. This model's ability uh, somehow aligned uh, much better. This is rediscovered uh, recently from another paper. Um, but um, uh, I think this is also an interesting um, 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 point. We need to look through. <clears throat> Okay, questions here? I think these things are really, really interesting and we have done a lot of like other uh, experiments uh, on top of it as well. Like we have been doing like many shots uh, in context learning. Uh, we have been testing these architectures on the bioinformatic uh, data sets to see if there's like anything there. Uh, we have also like that, like in the bioinformatics, we actually building um, a retrieval based system uh, where like the retrieval simply uh, replace the uh, MSA, which is a very important feature uh, in uh, AlphaFold, uh, those steps. Um, okay. Questions here? No? If not, I will be go through for another five or 10 minutes so that we begin something uh, we want to discuss next. So um, previously, what we've been discussing about is all about left to right generation. So what's beyond uh, left to right generation? Do we have any other like paradigms that uh, uh, we think it should be um, worth considering at least in this space? Uh, one of the things that uh, um, mostly obvious to us is like the diffusion model has been used for generating uh, the images, like uh, uh, its dominancing um, way of generating images in the computer vision um, 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 uh, uh, research. So what we're doing here is the counterpart with, to that is like non-autoregressive um, text generation. Autoregressive means just left to right. And uh, uh, what we've been doing, what we argue, why it's better, why it's probably better, uh, it's, first of all, uh, it gives you a parallel generation um, um, uh, 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 thing where like you can generate multiple tokens at one time, right? So this is like efficiency um, consideration. And second of all is like, uh, you can probably iteratively refine that as well. So for example, if you generate a sentence like Shanghai is the largest city in the world, which is not true, um, you still have the way like to refine that. You can input that into your model and then let the model to decode it for once more and you're probably getting the correct answer. Uh, Tokyo is the largest city in the world in terms of the population. And uh, this is like the traditional argument for um, um, non-regressive generation models. Um, what I think is uh, also interesting is I think these models fundamentally um, um, models a different family, I would say, a different family of PX um, than the autoregressive ones. Um, so um, the model will have like a different uh, um, inductive bias towards like modeling the language. Um, therefore, uh, it can make different types of um, mistakes. It also have different types of advantages um, in terms of the final um, product that we have there. 
So um, this example, I think quite interesting. Uh, this is from, uh, I think a lot of people uh, following the language agent uh, 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 research uh, from Yao Shun Yu uh, is uh, familiar with this task, uh, where like the language model is basically be asking, uh, you have a, 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 some numbers and you want to uh, the model to give it a way of like uh, uh, compute it into 24. Uh, in the end. So this is a game that we all been playing uh, in our childhood. So uh, and the, the autoregressive models having this kind of info is this kind of mistakes, which I, I feel is quite, quite interesting. It's like, it knows that it should be equal to 24, but because of the previous make mistakes, uh, it really can't get into 24 in the end, but it has to get into <laughs> the 24 in the end. So what it will do is we'll say uh, seven times two equals 24, or like uh, 13 times two <laughs> equals 24. It makes this kind of mistakes simply because it just, uh, you know, the mistakes has been um, accumulated there from left hand side to the right hand side for so long uh, that the models simply don't have a way to backtracking to globally fix what they uh, should be doing in this sequence task. So um, it's just like a, a, a three years old child probably. It's like, it, it's, it's 24. And right? so in the end of the day, uh, uh, 13 times two equals 24, something like that. So um, this actually is a very interesting stuff because it's Pointing out this left to right autoregressive models, they just uh, like cascade the errors. In the end of the day, they can't go back, right? So this is the problem. And um, imagine that uh, if we can do the iterative refinement there, if we can do the global level side parallel generation, also means global modeling. If we can do the global modeling of the sequence, we probably will be fixing up. You know, uh, you can get 24 here. It's not because like 13 uh, times two. I don't think language models have a problem of computing 13 times two, by the way. Um, it's not because that. It's because like previously, you didn't get the correct number 13, something like that. So you, 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 you will have like this problem fixed uh, in a global manner. So um, people have been doing this before. Uh, this is a paper by uh, Jia Tao Gu uh, 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 in the year of 2018. Uh, so Jia Tao is actually now in Apple. Uh, I think he's probably physically quite close to um, uh, the company. Uh, uh, so uh, what he was doing uh, is that uh, it's quite, quite easy. Uh, it's that we have the former decoder transform. What we're doing there is instead of like decoding one token at a time, I'll put anything together, everything together. So this is like called uh, non-regressive uh, neural machine translation. A lot of things are from neural machine translation. <laughs> if you just throw this encoder part away, it becomes G GPT, because GPT is only a decoder. If you throw this decoder away, you get everything um, 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 here. So that's like, you know, this is not a coincidence because um, a language model problem is a language model problem where we trying to um, uh, build the, the probability of px where x the sentence there. Machine translation is called a conditional language modeling problem where we're trying to build the p, let's, let's, let me just say x given y. It should be usually p of y given x, but p of x given y, where y is like the uh, input sentence. Conditioning on the sentence, it's still a language model problem of generating that thing. So when we think about it, we just remove the left-hand side part, and this has been done before. But the problem of that is like, if you simply train something like that, um, the performance is quite, quite low. Um, so this is caused by um, people later understand or discussed um, uh, as a problem of modality complex. What's the modality complex? So in a real uh, 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 natural language text, uh, we sometimes having called this thing modality. So for example, you want to translate uh, thank you into English and you have many ways of it. You can say many thanks. You can say thank you. This or fact or, 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 or no problem with any of this. But the problem is that when you're doing autoregressive auto model, if you predict the token many, it's impossible that you will predict you in the, like, for the next token, right? It has to be like thanks. If you have predicted the token thank, 
then it's not not possible that you will be predicted like thanks for the next token. So here in the non-autoregressive uh, translation generation, because we're considering every position same um, at the same time and kind of like independent to each other, like more independent than autoregressive at, at least. So it has this conflict. Where like the first part say, you know, thank for the first, first token is really okay. Thanks for the second token is really okay as well. But like you can't translate the sentence into thank thanks because of something like different modalities that you learned from the data. And you can't really distinguish them during the decoding period. So this is the huge, huge problem which um, uh, 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 hurts the performance uh, that we have for the now regressive uh, uh, transformer models that time. Okay, so uh, I think uh, probably we'll be needing to stop that today, um, and we'll be talking about the, the solutions that we have for the next time. Um, and I think we have time for one or two questions.